We're back. All right. So I know you guys can scan without us for too long. So we're back. Uh, we're going to do a couple of examples for you guys. Because uh, Delta Math, that's what you're working on. So we're going to go through the different assignments, like assignment number 92, 93. And we're going to give some examples, maybe two of them from each section. We'll see how it goes. So the first one I want to talk about is assignment number 92. And here is a problem that I want to discuss as far as, hey, how do we do assignment number 92? So I'm going to start off with just numbers. We're not looking at any equations or expressions right now. We just want to look at how does the X method work. So if I have 6 up here, 5 down here, what am I supposed to do with this X method? So let's think of all the numbers that if I multiply together, that I will get 6 as a result. And the sum would be equal to 5. Remember, product at the top and the sum on the bottom. <clears throat> So if I take 6, what are all the factors of it? So for example, 1 times 6 gives me 6. 2 times 3 gives me 6. And then my next number I want to try is 3, but I already have 3. So therefore, I have reached all the factors of 6. But because 6 is also positive, I have to account for, well, how else can it be positive? Negative 1 times negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 3. They would also give me positive 6, positive 6 as a result of multiplying those two numbers together. At this point, I want to check which addition would give me 5. 1 plus 6, does that give me 5? No, it doesn't. So therefore, it's out of the equation. 2 times 3, if I add up, I get 5. Hey, that works. But let me see if something else also works. Negative times, I mean, negative plus a negative, does that give me a positive result? No, that would give me more negatives. So these are also out of question. So the only result I have is 2 and 3. So 2 times 3 gives me 6. At the same time, 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Now, when you're working these out, you can't really do all this work on the computer. So therefore, make sure you have this paper next to you. You're working all these out on your paper. And then once you have your result, you can go ahead and plug those answers onto Schoology. Okay, so that was one example. Now we're going to see another example from your other favorite teacher. Hi, everybody. As Mr. Tesson said, we are back. Um, I'm going to do another example, a different way. Remember, there is no one particular way of doing one math problem. You can do it in various ways. Whichever way works for you, that's the method that we recommend you use. So again, just to recap what he did, remember, the number here, that's up here, we're going to require two numbers. When we multiply those together, we should get this one. And the number here, when we add them, as he said, or combine them, we should get this number here. So if we're looking at this example, notice our top number here is 35, and our bottom is 12. So we're looking for two numbers that give us 35 when we multiply, and 12 when we add or combine. So what I like to do instead of using this method here, is using this method here. And we practice this in class a little bit. Call it the T method right here, T table. And what you're going to do is whatever number you have here at the top, you're going to write it on the left side. So we're going to put our 35 right here. And then the bottom number is 12. We're going to put it right here. So instead of us writing our combinations here as Mr. Testone did, we're going to write our combinations here. So here we go. Notice, I like to start with my basic number, which is 1. And I say 1 times what gives me 35? Well, it's 35. Now notice this is a positive number, so positive times positive is going to give me a positive. But the other combination that works with these numbers is the negative times the negative. So negative 1 times negative 35. That also gives me 35. Moving on to our second number. Let's see, does 2 go into 35? The answer is no. Uh, how about 3? No. 4? No. 4 times nothing gives me 35. 5? Yes. 5 goes into 35 7 times, so 5 times 7 gives me 35. And looking back at this, remember 2 positives gives me a positive, but also 2 negatives give me that positive. So I'm also going to write negative 5 times negative 7. Let's check if we have more combinations. So let's ask, does 6 go into 35? The answer is no. Does 7? Yes. But notice that we already have it here, so we're done. Once we get to this point, we're done with our list because it repeated itself when it came to the 7. And now what we're going to find out is which of these four combinations give us that 
positive 12 when we add or combine. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1 plus 35 equals, in this case, 36. As you can see, this combination does give us a 35, but it does not give us the 12 that we're looking for. So that combination doesn't work for us. Going back to this one here now, negative 1 minus 35. In this case, negative 1 minus 35 gives me negative 36. So again, it doesn't work out for us. Moving on to the next one. 5 and 7. I'm going to add those. 5 plus 7. 5 plus 7 does give us a 12, which is what we want. Before we move on to this part here, I want to finish this one out so you guys can see what would have happened with this one. Negative 5 minus 7. In this case, we get a negative 12. So in this case, this one also doesn't work out because it's a negative 12. We want a positive 12. So this is the combination that we were looking for, which is composed of 5 and 7. These are your two factors that you're going to write over here on this side. So we're going to put 5 and 7. And as you can see, 5 times 7 gives us 35. 5 plus 7 gives us 12. And we are done with this problem.